Hi, my name is Andrew Wang, and I'm a solutions architect here at AWS. Today, I'm going to be talking about the limits you may run into when using the Local Secondary Index, or LSI, on DynamoDB. As you already know, Amazon DynamoDB is a serverless NoSQL database with single-digit millisecond latency. DynamoDB provides fast access to items in the table by you specifying their primary key values at the time of the query. However, many applications often require one or more access pattern that database needs to support. So to allow efficient access to these attributes other than the primary keys, we have the secondary index. A secondary index is a data structure that contains a subset of attributes from, the, from a table. DynamoDB supports two types of secondary index, the global secondary index and the local secondary index. You can issue query or scan requests against these indexes. Check out our DynamoDB Nuggets video on choosing the right secondary index to use. In today's video though, we're going to focus on the local secondary index and the limits that you may run into when you're designing a table with LSI. So a quick recap on what is an LSI. An LSI or local secondary index essentially is an index with the same partition key as the base table, but with a different attribute as a sort key. So imagine having a table for an e-commerce application that tracks a different order coming in. You have a primary key of order ID and a sort key of order date to query orders by customer sorted by time. So let's now take a look at a sample table. Here we have the base table with the access pattern of order by order date. However, maybe you also want to understand customer orders by product category or by the order amount. So you can create an LSI in this case to query the order ID partition key and further narrow down the results of the product category. So one key thing to remember if you're looking to utilize an LSI is that you must create your LSI at the time of table creation. Now let's take a look at how we can create an LSI. There are three different ways you can create an LSI. You can use the AWS console, the AWS CLI, or the AWS SDK. I'll do a quick demo here through the AWS console. Here in the console, we can click on the Create Table button and it will take us through the configuration. Let's give this table a name of orders with a primary key of order ID and a sort key of order date. Then to add a secondary index, you will want to use the Customize Settings option. We'll keep the capacity setting to the default values but you see here under the secondary index section, you can create a local index and a global index. To create a new local secondary index, you will click on the create local index button. The first thing you'll need to put in is an alternative sort key to your base table. For this new index, I'm going to use the order status attribute as my new sort key. Then you can also customize your index name. Here I'm going to leave it just as the order status index. Then the last thing you can customize is your attribute projection. You have three different options when it comes to attribute projection. First is the all projection. That means you're going to project all the table attributes onto the index. Then you have the only keys option. This option only project the index and the primary keys onto the index. Lastly, you have the include option, which will project all attributes described in only keys and other non-key attributes that you specify. Once you have selected your settings, here I'm going to keep it to all for my attribute projection, you can hit the create index button. You can see now the order status index is now created with the type local to signify that it's a local secondary index. Here comes the first limit that you need to be aware of if you want to use LSI with your DynamoDB tables. The limit is that you can have a maximum of five local secondary indexes per DynamoDB table. I'm going to create five LSIs here for this demo. Now you see that I have created five different local secondary indexes here for this table. And when I try to create a sixth one by clicking the create local secondary index button, you can see that it gave me an error that I cannot create more than five local secondary indexes per table. So if you're going to utilize LSI as part of your design, to think through what are the access patterns that you need LSI to support before you create all these LSIs. And also make sure to remember that LSI can only be created during table creation. And now let's create this DynamoDB table so we can add some items to it.
Now that the table has been created, I'm going to switch to the AWS CLI for the rest of the demo. Here, I'm using the AWS Cloud Shell, which is a browser-based shell you can quickly run scripts with the AWS CLI. The next limit you need to be aware of is that tables with OSI enable has a 10 gigabytes item collection size limit. This means that for all the items under the same partition key value, the size of those items plus the same item in each OSI you create cannot exceed that limit. To avoid this limit, you want to make sure your partition key has high cardinality as well as only projecting the necessary attributes onto your OSI to limit the size of the items on those indexes. If you do hit the limit, you will get an item collection size limit exceed the exception and you will not be able to add more items. Let's go back to Cloud Shell and take a look at how we can keep track of the item collection sizes of your table. I have the 50 kilobyte items here that I'm going to write to the orders table that we just created earlier. I'm using the put item operation here to write this item onto the orders table. You can see that I'm setting the return item collection metrics to size here to return the size of my item collection. Executing this command, you can see at the bottom of this response, the size estimate range GB gives me the size of the item collection. It's currently between zero to one gigabytes. Remember the maximum size of an item collection is 10 gigabytes. Another interesting thing we can see here is that this operation took 300 write capacity units. Now you probably remember that one kilobyte of item consumes just one write capacity unit. So a 50 kilobyte item should have taken 50 write capacity unit. But in this case, it's taken 300. That's because for table with OSI, the item size is actually the size of the item written to the base table plus the size of the item written to each of the secondary indexes. So for a 50 kilobyte item with five OSI table, which means 50 times six is 300 kilobytes. And that's the item size for this operation. That brings us to our last limit that we'll be discussing today, which is that the item size of a table with local secondary index is the base table plus all the secondary indexes. Let's look at this example with a hundred kilobyte item. So let me write, try to write this to my orders table. A hundred kilobyte items writing to the, a table with five OSI means the item size is now 600 kilobytes. DynamoDB has a limit of 400 kilobyte as your max item size. So let's see what happens when I try to write this item to the table. I've created an item here that's around 100 kilobytes in size. I'm going to attempt to do the same put item operations to the orders table and see what happens here. You can see here are the commands for the put item operation. Hit enter. You can see here that I've got an exception for the item size exceeding the maximum allowed size. Even though the item is only 100 kilobytes because there are five local secondary indexes plus the base table, that is 600 kilobytes of item size that we're running into. So this is another, so this is another limit that you need to be aware of when using OSI, that each OSI you create has an impact on your item size. And that's it, folks. Thank you all for watching this video. Hope it's helpful. We'll see you again in the next video.